Hi, this is Andy Katz, host of March Madness 365, presented by Grammarly. This week on the podcast, tune in as we discuss March Madness players, upsets, matchups, and bracket busters. Listen to March Madness 365 with Andy Katz, presented by Grammarly, wherever you get your podcasts. Grammarly is a secure AI writing partner that gives your team an instant first draft in a few clicks, not a few hours. Companies that use Grammarly save an average of 19 days per employee per year. Grammarly works seamlessly across 500,000 apps and websites. Get personalized on-brand writing help everywhere your team works. Learn what better writing can do for your company at Grammarly.com. Grammarly. Easier said. Done. Believe it or not, summer is just around the corner. Luckily, Armor All, America's most trusted auto appearance brand, has what your car needs to get that perfect summer shine. Plus, now through May 31st, we'll give you $5 for every $20 you spend on Armor All products. That means car wash pods, protectant, tire shine, you name it. Find out how to get your $5 rebate at armorall.com. Armor All. Less work, more clean. Terms apply. After I drew up a contract for the pricing, which I gave her, she then bragged to me she was going to buy a brand new BMW, which she already had a new car. And then she wanted me to install a custom closet for her 50 designer pocketbooks that she wanted to put in. Okay. Oh, I guess you should have charged a little more. Yes. This is the plaintiff, Russell King. He says he painted the interior of the defendant's house. The woman hasn't paid him in full, and that's just not right. She also bragged to him about buying a new car. She has no cooth, and he wants every penny of the $3,000 he's owed because he did an excellent job for that lady and is tired of waiting around for his money and deserves to be paid. This is the defendant, Rashida Brown. She says the plaintiff brought his young 12-year-old to work with him and had him use heavy, dangerous machinery and had him do manual labor. The man also asked her out on dates in front of his son and acted in a highly inappropriate manner. Bottom line, he did some work for her, never came back to finish the job. She's all paid up with him and owes him nothing but a good riddance. She's accused of shortchanging a painter. All parties, please use your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. You see, they come to order, please. Let me get to Thank you. You're this welcome, is Russell man. King. You are suing Rashida Brown uh, for $3,000 that you say she owes you for construction work that you were doing on her home. Tell me what happened. On July 27th, um, I was contacted by Ms. Brown through a family friend. Um, she had asked me if I could help her put down a hardwood floor into her home that she just purchased. I did so. I came by her house to look at the flooring. While I was there, she didn't ask me if I could pick up some extra jobs in the house, such as painting, the complete interior of a 1,200 square foot home, also tearing down 230 feet of fencing and installing a new fence, also installing tiling into one of her bathrooms. I agreed to doing it. For what price? Initially, I gave her a price um, for the painting of $700. She said she didn't have that type of money. So I kept reducing the price until we figured out it would be $300. The reason why I kept dropping the price was we're both a part of an, um, a nonprofit organization where we help young adults. So I figured it would be one time that I helped somebody out for such a low price. But did she need you to help her out for such a low price? No. Um, after I drew up a contract for the pricing which I gave her, she then bragged to me she was going to buy a brand new BMW, which she already had a new car. And then she wanted me to install a custom closet for her 50 designer pocketbooks that she wanted to put in. Okay. Oh, I guess you should have charged a little more. Yes. All right, so do you have the contract? Yes, I do. Let me see it. <clears throat> so what work did, were you able to complete there? I completed the flooring, the tiling, and the painting. The painting was done? Yes. The, the flooring was done. What wasn't done that was in the scope of the work? Just the Just fence? Just the final installation of the new fence, which she had already hired someone to do it while I was there. So when you come to do the work, you're surprised to see somebody else doing it? 
Um, on the last day, yes, because um, I was finishing up on the hardwood flooring, and that was my final day, and I was going to start the rest of the fencing the and next day. And did she day. tell you why somebody else was doing it? No. At, at that point, we had become kind of separated on our issues. How so? Well, I, I realized that I, I felt like I was being taken advantage of because um, she did have the money, and that her personality was a little bit more of a materialistic person, not what I expected. Was she impolite? Was she bossy? Little was bossy. She, little was bossy. she not? Was she impolite to the people working there? What do you mean? No, she was a little bossy. Um, when I tried to explain to her details about how jobs are done, she pretty much told me, you don't need to tell me that I know all this stuff. So I stopped explaining what I was doing to her. All right, so when you got there and somebody else was doing your work, what, what did you say or do? I didn't. I just finished what I, what I finished. I asked for the final payment, and I was going to go leave. Were you at, what was the final payment that you asked for? Um, which should have been $600. Is that what you asked for? At or did you ask for less than that? No, that was what was left on, on the contract. Okay. And then she said what? No, she wasn't going to pay me because I wouldn't take material left over and stock it into her basement. Why won't you pay him? I paid him for everything he worked for. I even gave him an extra $100 for taking down that fence. And then I paid my friend Jeremy to put up the fence. I paid Why him did for you everything. switch who was putting up the fence? Because you have a contract with him that you're going to pay him $500 to put up the fence. Because after you called me dumb, asked me if I was on my period, um, talked to me inappropriately in front of his son. How? Uh, asking me to go on dates to Cedar Beach with him. Uh, also saying that um, it's okay that his 13, he's 13 now, your old son on heavy machinery. I said, is that okay? He said, oh no, he's fine. I was uncomfortable. I walked outside. I said, are you okay? He said, I'm fine. Then I watched him cut the wrong size pieces. He ruined like almost a box of bamboo flooring. He was very rude, very the disrespectful. The child or the parent? Oh okay. no, the kids are the sweetest kids ever. The mom does a great job with them. Okay. I work with the mom Thursday. I teach an adult class on Thursdays. I see her there all the time. Those kids are well behaved, well dressed, mannerable. So I didn't even know what he was talking about when he started talking craziness about his wife. Well, you know the children that you teach dance I to love the children kids, too. Yes. All right. So explain to me. How much had you paid him until that part? I paid him for the painting. I paid someone else $400. So you paid 300 for the painting? Mm -hmm. And he didn't have to paint the entire house. The house was painted. There was like splotches okay. and blotches because I paid what somebody else. What else did you pay him for? Um, I paid for the hardwood flooring. So that's another 300 right? Right. Okay. Anything else? And I paid $100 for taking down the fence. You paid him $100 for taking down the fence. So according to you, you paid $700. Uh, and 600 according to, he signed my contract. That, the contract he gave you. How much did you pay him? I, let me look at the contract. I'm pretty sure I gave him 600 I think. Okay. Because the, the contract, well, the well, no, 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 700 Because the last bit of the money that I gave him was cash and he didn't sign. But I do have a text messages from him saying, oh, are you going to give me my $130? Because I remember when he came, I didn't know he was going to finish up the job that day. So I had the $500 to pay Jeremy for the fence. I said, well, I didn't know that she was going to finish Who's up today. Who's Jeremy? Jeremy's the guy. The who other did, guy? Yes. Okay. Who finished up my fence. So I said, I didn't know you was going to rush the job and finish because he was supposed to put down. So rush what job and finish what job? Rush the, the job floor? for the bathroom. He was supposed to put in tiles. Right. Of, and a subfloor. I went and bought He's all He's going to put a subfloor for a hundred bucks? Well, that's what he told me. I'm not going to argue that. Are you going to argue that? Somebody gives you a good price? I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen. That's what's uh, no, the no, problem. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to tell you right. what happened. So uh, he, I bought the subfloor and then when he saw the guy there, he didn't. He no longer wanted to do the work. I said, fine. He said, well, the tiles are too heavy. It'll sink through the floor. We have to return the tiles and get the peel and stickings. I said, whatever. So the peel and stickings okay. are in now. So I just need you to listen to my question. Okay, no problem. All right. So you paid him to install the tile. That's 100 bucks on the contract. Uh -huh. And you paid him to uh, paint. That's 300 bucks on the on contract. On the seven. And you paid him to put in the hardwood floor. That's also 300 bucks on the contract. That's uh, the altogether, seven. Altogether, yes. Did you pay him more than that seven hundred dollars? There's nothing there then for the fence. So did you pay him more than that seven hundred dollars? Can I show you that my you different? Because my copy is different than his, and it has his signature on it. Okay, let me see what you have. Did, did you, paid for can you just listen to my question though? How much total did you pay him? I want to say I paid about seven hundred dollars because I gave him two hundred dollars cash, and he said that I owed him another hundred thirty dollars in a Do you not message. know how? You, can, you just talk a lot, but you're not. Okay. Do you know how much you paid him? Is it seven hundred? Do, do you want to say it's seven hundred or is it seven hundred? So you're not what sure I don't what want you to do him. is not tell the truth. Okay, so you're I not sure what you paid him. So th right. that six hundred dollars, I am sure because we signed off for that. By but the way, you I have the exact same thing. The exact same thing. Exact same thing. Okay. 
All right, so according to this, you Can still owe six hundred dollars. No way. I paid. I'm not paying for. He didn't put the fence in. That's and just, I have a text. Can you stop talking and listen to me? Mm. Listen to me. Okay. According to this, there's six hundred dollars <laughs> owed, and if he didn't put the fence, the fence is five hundred, mm -hmm. but it's going to be less than that because he already pulled out the other fence and you switched it on. And so, uh, if you have a good reason for switching, look at me. Yes. If you have a good reason for not letting him finish right. it, which is that people he's being disrespectful or whatever yeah. else you expect, mm -hmm. that's fine. But he would still get paid for what it is that he did do. Right. So this contract says he's owed five that that you're going to pay him. 500 for the fence. Right. In mid fence, after he yanked out the old chain link, right. you decide he's rude, he's inappropriate, I don't want him here. That, that's yes. fine. If yes. I decide that's fine, then that's him breaching and not you. Mm -hmm. And if that's fine, then it would just be the portion of that 500 that you do not owe him because you had somebody else do if your breach was fine because okay. it was his fault. If his if it was his Can breach, I, really. I have a text saying that I owe only one hundred and thirty dollars from what we agreed that needed to be paid, and he texted me. What was it agreed that needed? To I told him that I don't have all the cash to pay you what you want me to pay you today because I only have the two hundred and fifty dollars that I was supposed to give Jeremy for half of the job and then a remainder two hundred and fifty dollars for the other. Do you half. really drive a BMW? You have a bunch of like decorated purses and you have I have a I had a two thousand eleven BMW that I trained. So you're entitled to drive I'm just saying yes. well you you know like And I had a two thousand fifteen I don't have fifty purses. I donated twenty to the Salvation Army, so I have thirty now. Oh lovely <laughs> Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So if the plaintiff asked the defendant out on a date and she said, uh, you know, she was upset about it, is that enough to break the contract? Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. You think so? No, it's, I think it's okay. It's just this harmless thing. Yeah. Okay, so what if then uh, he saw that she was mad and he asked her if she was on her period? Would that be enough? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what do you say about that? It's not on the contract, but I wouldn't be too happy because that's a very personal question. Yeah, they generally don't have periods in the contract. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, going inside the courtroom. <laughs> so tell me, um, all right. So you don't have any text that show that you gave him I the 100? do have text. Oh, the text of the 130. Right. Let me see it. I'd like to see it in your phone if okay, you Okay, no problem. Okay, so there's a series of texts where you talk to each other and you're discussing what's owed. And in them, you say, I'm going to stop by Sunday for the $130 balance. How did $130 become $600? How did $600 become $3,000 in court today? Well, the $3,000 was because I felt the contract was written up for false statements to her. She what does that these, mean? Well, what she said was, I don't have money, but she had the money. Tough for you. I agree. Okay, I agree. so then so you get it for $3,000. Right, so now that's, that's knocked it down to right. what? Well, how did, is it 130 like your text says, or is it 600 What is that about? When I was driving, that's when I did the text. I pulled over the side of the road. I didn't have my contract on me. I did not go through the numbers. I didn't add anything up. When she got, when That's what you're going to say about why you... First of I, all, you said when I was driving. Then you realized that I'm going to come down and you for texting no, and no, driving. No, I, I no. Drive, I drove 750 miles back and forth. Then don't get, answer if you don't have the facts. You're suggesting to me that you're saying 130 mm -hmm. was wrong. If she said 130, you'll get the last 130 when you move the flooring to my basement, which, frankly, move it yourself. And uh, when you write in the text repeatedly, mm -hmm. not once, okay. uh, the 130 you owe me, yes. um, it appears that since you didn't have to do the remaining part of the fence, that somehow that's the term you guys agreed to, right? We didn't agree to it. That's what she was saying. So when I stopped on the side of the road to read text, I just She repeated. says that she didn't want to continue to employ you because you were rude. I was not rude to her, ma'am. Okay. I was not rude to her. If you owe, why did you employ Jeremy to do the rest of that fence? There was a couple of times he was no call, no show. You can see in a text message where he said, I came in at 5 a.m., I'm still asleep. So I would screenshot the messages back to him and said, you said you was coming. Uh, and then he was just like, I can't see media. And then another day he said he was going to come. And I'm like on a time constraint. I'm paying $800 a month to keep my dog in a kennel. You're 200... paying $800 a month to keep your dog in a kennel? And right. you're paying this guy like $700 to do it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the price he said. That's um, it. Everybody it's a price he up. said. It's mm -hmm. a, this is a lesson learned for you a little bit, right? A little bit. You know, because if you're bitter while you're doing the job, it's a problem. Did you ask her out while you were doing the job? No, I did not. To see the beach? Did you ask her to the beach? A network of us go to the beach. I wasn't asking her to date. I said, we go to the beach. Would you like to join us? Okay. That's all. 
All right, were you inappropriate in any way? No, ma'am. You didn't ask me if I was on my period? I did that one time because she was acting really strange that day. I was having a bad time. <laughs> bad. Well, bad idea, uh, my yes, friend. Yes, I agree. Very bad idea. You didn't curse me out? You didn't? Okay, stop talking right, to him directly. Okay, no yes. problem. You know what? If it's good enough for you guys, it's good enough for me. I'm going to order you to pay the $130. And as far as the stuff he left there that was, you know, yeah, maybe it would have been nice to bring it to the basement, but it, it, seriously, I would do that in four seconds. There's not, it's not a reason to hold back whatever money you owed him, according to you at that point. Um, I would and according him. to him, uh, you know, uh, so if, if $130 is what we were talking about over that, $130, verdict for the plaintiff. Good luck, folks. No problem. Okay, full all right, well, he sued for $3,000. He came out with $130. Uh, what, what's your reaction on this verdict? That's fair verdict enough. There? That's fair That's enough. enough. Yes, I so, just wanted to get paid for the actual work that I did. Mm -hmm. You regret any of your uh, behavior or things you said to her? Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have asked if she was on a period. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Oh, so, okay, so how are you, how you feeling about the outcome of this case here? Good. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's fair. All right, he, he kind of feels like you tried to, you know, do him Stiff him. No, absolutely not. I would have paid him. And you had all those, and you have all those uh, handbags that you were bragging about there. They're so. Irrelevant, but I wasn't They're bragging about anything. If I got it, I got it. How many handbags you got? I have thirty now. Thirty. Mm -hmm. What do you do with them? I wear them. This is one. Isn't it pretty? Thanks. Harvey. <laughs> you know, you can cancel a contract for really inappropriate behavior, but this just doesn't rise to that level. And that will do it for this case, litigants. For the next case, on the way into the courtroom right now. Hi, this is Andy Katz, host of March Madness 365, presented by Grammarly. This week on the podcast, tune in as we discuss March Madness players, upsets, matchups, and bracket busters. Listen to March Madness 365 with Andy Katz, presented by Grammarly, wherever you get your podcasts. Grammarly is a secure AI writing partner that gives your team an instant first draft in a few clicks, not a few hours. Companies that use Grammarly save an average of 19 days per employee per year. Grammarly works seamlessly across 500,000 apps and websites. Get personalized on-brand writing help everywhere your team works. Learn what better writing can do for your company at Grammarly.com. Grammarly. Easier said, done. This is the plaintiff, James Plakarski. He says the defendant ordered a 10-inch cake for his estranged daughter's birthday, made him a custom layered cake with teal-colored frosting, and the guy never came to pick it up. He called and called, never got a response, sent a certified letter for payment, and is now taking legal action. He's suing for $298, $70 for the cost of the cake, and the rest in storage fees. This is the defendant, Tony. He says he did indeed order a cake, but then went back and canceled the cake because he didn't need it anymore. He kept telling the plaintiff he personally went into the bakery to cancel the order with one of his employees. But the guy refuses to believe him. Well, he's sorry, but he did nothing wrong and feels the plaintiff's employee is scared to tell him the truth. He's accused of bugging out a baker. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant ordered a 10-inch cake for his estranged daughter, never came to pick it up, and now he wants to get paid. But the defendant says he canceled the order beforehand. It's the case of you really take the cake. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome, okay. Small Batch Bakery, represented here by Mr. Plucharski. You're the owner. Yes. You are suing Tony. You've asked us not to mention your last name. Tony, for $298, $70 for the price of a cake he had you make, $88 for storing the cake from then to now, and double damages for his intent to defraud you. What happened? Um, good afternoon, Your Honor. Thank you for hearing our case. Um, the uh, defendant came into my bakery, wanted to talk about ordering a cake. He was asking for something that we normally don't do. Which is? A uh, marble cake. Um, but uh, she took his information and said she'll check with the decision maker, which would be me, and she'll get back to him to see if we could do that. She took other pertinent information, his uh, phone number, his name, of course, and uh, that he wanted a 10-inch cake. And one other unique uh, requirement was that it had to be a teal cake, which, you know, uh, 
for a girl we thought was a little unusual, but that's fine. She came to me, uh, first opportunity, ran it, ran it all by me. Um, I said we can't do a marble cake in this time frame, and uh, but we suggested alternating layers of chocolate and vanilla, which was uh, fine. She went back to him, called him. Um, Who is she? Is it the person sitting there? Yes, ma'am. Come my, on up. My uh, okay. Witness. So, um, do you actually remember talking to him? Yes. Okay. Why do you remember this in particular? Um, this was the first time that I had encountered someone who simply did not come in to pick up their cake entirely. The amount of time I invested in this one specifically is okay. what makes it memorable. Okay, so what happens? You call him back and you tell him, no marble, but alternating layers. See, Do you speak with him in, yes, himself? Yes, in person. And he then dis asked me that we make it an 8-inch instead of a 10-inch cake because the um, number of people in his party had either changed or he just reconsidered. And I finished writing out the order form that we keep, and that was it. Our order was confirmed. Don't you take us. deposits on cakes? Uh, our policy uh, was not definitely to always take a deposit. Now it is. Um, All right, so what happens? He says, yeah, okay, I'll pick it up at what time? It was set for 2 to 3 p.m. on the 26th. And that was how far in advance? It was, the chef had mentioned we needed two weeks to do marble. It was less than two weeks. It was around 10 days. Why do you need t two weeks to do marble? It's not do something we that? do normally. Yeah. Uh, well, I bake chocolate cake and then vanilla cake on different days, and uh, if I'm baking them, um, if I've already baked them for the week, um, it's not possible to make marble batter at that time. Because you do it in such big amounts? Uh, yeah, the name of the place is Small Batch Bakery, but you know, I do things, exactly. I, I, do things I don't make just one cake when I make a cake. So then you serve me a week stale cake and when you do a No, ma'am, it's not stale. No, you're How not. long does cake keep? Uh, that depends. My mom, God rest her soul. How long does that cake that you've apparently stored for 88 days keep? 88 yeah. days? <laughs> right. So what, why did you save the cake? Well, because I felt that uh, at some he point... He never picked it up? No. Did he ever call or anything? Did you he call never. him to say what the heck? Repeatedly. Many. You, you did or he did or both, both of you did? Us. Did any of you ever talk to him? I never did again. Okay, did you? I did not, but I did plenty of research to get in touch with him. Uh, all we had was a name. Uh, so I really had to do some... You know, investigation to find out who he was and how to reach him. Man, um, you were mad. Well, uh, uh, how know. much is a cake worth? worth? You sell it for $70. 70 dollars. $70. It obviously uh, it doesn't cost you $70 to make it. No. So, uh, and you, you filed this case. How much did you pay to file this case? Uh, 60, 65 for the uh, actual court and then 40 to have them serve. So you, you paid $105 to pursue your $70 because small claims is never about the money. So you must have been angry. Okay, would you go to court for $70 and pay $145 in court case and court fees if it's a matter of principle? I would definitely not pay the $145 to go to court. It's not worth it. It's time and money. But does principle matter in court? Uh, I think to a certain extent, but not for 70 bucks. Not for 70 bucks? What do you say? No. You wouldn't do it? No. Does it have to be more than the court cost in order to make it worth your while? Yeah. Okay. I guess. <laughs> okay. Going inside the courtroom. If I may explain why I was angry, um, having to reach the defendant, find out who, how to get in touch with him, I found out a few things about him. When I found out that he's a former bakery owner himself, I got very upset. Uh, I thought this is no way to conduct business or treat you know, a hardworking bakery. And $70 may not seem like a lot, but uh, that's actually almost a Well, full no, if you pay 105 to get the 70, that's the part I'm remarking about. I would yes. never say that if okay. you didn't have the money to pay court costs. But when you have the 100, it's about the, listen, I respect that. I respect principle. What's going on? Um, well, yeah, to that, that point is correct. I went in, I did order cake, um, spoke with, I believe it was her, um, or, one of the, or the other girl, I'm not sure. And I requested that, to pick the cake up at noontime. Can I see the cake? Go on. And they said they couldn't accommodate that, that I couldn't pick it up at noontime. They didn't have, they couldn't get it ready for noontime. So. Oh, so, but wait, the noontime thing was a change in order? Change in time. Yeah, okay, Changing so they said, time. no, you can't do it, and then you just decided you wouldn't pick up the cake? No, you didn't I say, no, don't make it then? No, you I, didn't... I canceled the cake and ordered it at another bakery. Okay, watch this. Did he cancel the cake? 
No, ma'am. Okay, because they baked it anyway. So if you canceled the cake, no problem. Just prove you canceled the cake. Uh, uh, you have evidence that I submitted? Yes. Let me with see a, it. With the picture of the cake? That Is I, that that's the cake? Yes, ma'am. Right. Why are you storing the cake? Why don't you just take a picture of the cake for court? Why would you store the cake? And then you're suing $88 for storage fees for the cake? Your Honor, I'm happy you to. You cannot be serious. I'm, I'm half serious. I'm happy to forget that. Um, you know, that was also an incentive, Your Honor. It was a reasonable $1 a day. I'm sorry. Where am I going to see the evidence that you canceled it? Uh, no, that's the order form from the other bakery. Oh, yeah, that's obvious. Uh, you know, we know you didn't pick it up and you made other arrangements. The question is, should you still have to pay for the cake? Mm -hmm. Oh, and storage fees and $140 for lying to him. Or <laughs> should you not have to pay because you legitimately canceled it? Show me proof that you canceled it. That's the cake that I picked up from I another I don't bakery. care that you picked up a cake Thanks. from somebody else. That just makes you, you could, either this means you canceled it or you're just a jerk. So show me the proof that you canceled it. I don't have any proof that I canceled oh, it. Okay, so I, I got to go see what a what an eighty eight day old. <laughs> I just I want to I want to know I want to know. Can I can I say something? Yeah, yeah, I want you to say something. The, yeah, the, the one dollar a day. I didn't expect it to go out eighty eight days. I expected him to. to well, what if I had taken? What if I wasn't the swift kind of justice I am, and it had taken six months to get here? Were you gonna just sit there and keep the cake until what? It grew legs and started walking? If you read my answer, Your Honor, it says until resolved. So. So you would have. We well. You would have seriously well, kept the cake, because what is this like? Why wouldn't a picture do? Did you think it was lunacy to I keep do the have cake? I have a picture as well. It was frozen. It was kept. Frozen. Oh, okay. You kept it frozen. Well, oh, I feel of course. A yeah, better. it's frozen. A little bit. Your Honor, uh, my mom, God rest her soul, has things in her freezer from 1986, and she swears they're perfectly fine. So. Oh well, who would know? Because they've been frozen since '86, so we don't know. You know. Tony. Yes. It is time to pay. For your cake. Yeah. I am going to order you to pay back the 70, pay the $70 for the cake, plus the court costs of $105 for him having to sue you to get the cake, but not the storage fees, nor does this case qualify for double damage. You can't turn a case of $70 into a case that's 298 because you're angry. That's not how it works. So $70 plus the court costs, verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, the defendant just bought himself a very nice teal cake there. It took a long time for you to actually pay for it, but it's yours now. Hmm? What are you going to do with it? I don't want it. You guys can have it. How's that? No. <laughs> I have nothing to do with it. It's up to you. <laughs> this is your problem. Don't uh, we'll force it on anyone else. Why did you make it such a big problem? Yeah, I didn't make it a problem. They couldn't accommodate my time, so I bought it from a different bakery. So you don't care that you stiffed them? I really don't care. You don't care? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so step on in here and uh, tell me what you, uh, why you went to this length to get paid for that cake. Uh, when I found out that he owned a bakery himself, I thought that was pretty egregious uh, treatment uh, to another hardworking baker. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that we should uh, uphold justice at every level, you know. Okay, Harvey. You know, I got to say, this is an interesting case because in this case, you know, the defendant could end up paying way more than the deal, the $70, because the court costs do add up and you get court costs if you win. And that will do it for this case litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, William Jackson. He says he sold his car to the defendant, his former boss, and the guy stiffed him. That's right, first he gave him a check that bounced, and now he's just giving him the runaround. He's tired of all the games this guy's playing, so he's taking him here to court and is suing him for the $1,600 he's owed. This is the defendant, Stephen Lupaner. He says the plaintiff racked up a huge amount of parking tickets, and the New York City Police Department confiscated his car. The plaintiff begged him to pay for the tickets. He agreed, and the plaintiff agreed to give him the car in return. The plaintiff signed the title over to him, and now the double-crosser's suing him? Please. He's accused of trying to get a car for free. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff sold his car to his boss and the guy stiffed him. But the defendant says the plaintiff racked up parking tickets and the car was impounded. It's the case of your ticket to court. Thank you. <laughs> William Jackson, you yes, are I suing am. Stephen Rupaner? Yeah. 
for one thousand six hundred dollars the cost of a nineteen ninety eight Mazda that you sold him that according to you he refuses to pay for. What happened? Apparently, um, I, I was doing some work with him. What kind of work? A labor work. Okay. And um, I came to work. I, I drove the car to to work, and. At the time, it was giving me some problems. I was getting a couple of tickets. Um, you well, know. You're giving it problems. It's not giving you problems. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You getting so, tickets is not exactly the car giving you a problem. The car is like, don't park me here. Yeah. Okay. What were the tickets for? Like, double for, parking? Um, I got one for double park, and I had to pay What were that. the other ones for? The other ones for were my car had got stuck. It was like an isolational day, one of those snowy days. And you're supposed to move to the other side of the street? Yeah, and, you didn't? and I couldn't. I had to get a boost, boost for it. Then I had to, I had to get a com complete. How many battery. tickets had you collected? I collected something like four tickets in a week, and I said, "No, nah, no, nah, this is this is not going to get it." You know. <laughs> so now, when I drove it to work, I drove it to work on Riverside Drive. It was this standing post. Red red sign. I was in red regulation. Uh oh, did you get more tickets? I had got a ticket for that. But then on that day, I came back out from work and I thought somebody had stole my car. I contacted the police department. They told me my car was in, in Pier 76. And I said, what? And I had to pay him to get it out, out of the- And the, you had to pay 300 and something? $75. Because you had to pay for the tow? Yes. Okay, go yes. on. Now, um, when I when I got the car out, I had bought already brought the the um, title papers to him. What for? To sell the car. Well, I didn't know that. You hadn't told me that part yet. Okay. All right. So you so you decided to sell him the car when? When I got the when I got the car out of uh, out of uh, Pier Seventy Six. Okay. So you brought him the title work and what? And and then when I turned the car over to him, I told him. I'll pay pay him the money money back, but then I said, "Wait, pay him what money back? Anything that that I borrowed from him." What had you borrowed from him? I was interested him? in getting the car back. Okay, what had you borrowed from him? Three three hundred and seventy five. You didn't say that. All right, so you borrowed the last three hundred and seventy five that you brought to them to pay them to get your car out of impound. You had borrowed from him. Yeah. Okay, and then what? I told him what I had I had borrowed from him. That you you would have to deduct it from from what I'm selling him the car for. All right, so you sell him the car. Yes. He pays you what? He paid me nothing. Okay. In your complaint, you say that he gave you a check for sixteen hundred dollars. Yeah, he gave me a check, and then I took that check to a cash checking place to cash it, and then it was no good. I brought it back to him and handed it to him. Okay. Then he gave me the money to get the car out of, uh, of pound. Okay. And then did you go with his $375 to get the car out of pound? Yes, I did. I went with his, 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 one of his, his students the, that, that accompanied him. Okay. And you tell him what? Once you pay the tickets and got the car out, you tell him what? Uh, I, where's the rest of my money? Yes. And he says what? He said, don't worry about it, you, you, you'll, get, you'll get it. You just yeah, but why did you sign the, you apparently signed the title over. Yes, I did. Why would you do that until you got paid for the car? I had to give him the title. To get the 375. That's right. And then for, for every week that I worked for him, I didn't even throw that up in his face. He was undercutting me for pay. Mr. Rapaner, what's going on? Um, I'm completely confused by everything he's telling me. It comes down, I keep telling, I keep telling Mr. Jackson, listen, you keep complaining, every week you come to do odd jobs for me, that's why he does errands and stuff like this. He keeps telling me, I keep, oh, Steve, I keep getting tickets all the time. I don't know what to do. So I told him, listen, sooner or later, you know, the city's gonna take your car, and they're gonna impound your car, and you don't have the money. I don't know how you, how you gonna get the funds to pay for your car to get out. And surely, as I predicted, two weeks later he's calling me, Steve, somebody took my car. Okay, no problem. You know, you do always odd jobs for me. You come help around my, my wife at the house, you know, you, you know, and so on and so forth. Come, come over to my house. Here's your, you know, I told him straight out, this, was, this is what we're gonna agree on. Okay, I'm gonna get your car out of the pound. I'm gonna send Antonio with you, and obviously you have to take the title with you to get the car out, to show that you are the proof, the ownership of the car. In this case, they went together. We gave him, I gave him the money. I don't even remember how much it was at this point. 
375. Okay. That I, I could have swum is like 600, 500. At this point, I don't even remember. At this point, I don't remember. I cannot tell you how much it was. Whatever it was, I gave him the Antonio the money. When he brings the title over Antonio, there, come up. How much money was it? Oh, uh, yeah, it was about like maybe four and change. Four and change. Okay, what, what, what? stay there. Go ahead. Okay, so I gave Antonio. Antonio, you go with Jackson. You redeem that car. Make sure he brings the title with you. And, he, and I told Jackson, listen, what do you want to do with that car when, when you get out? He said, I want nothing to do with that car anymore. I'm finished with that car. That car is costing me a lot of money. Every time I work, I keep paying tickets and tickets and tickets. So I told him, listen, what you're going to do, give the title over to Antonio. I'll pay for your car. And you get this. You so alleviate. you bought the car. Are you saying you bought the, the car for $400? Pretty much what I'm telling him is that if you want to get rid of the car, Give it, to, give it to Antonio the title. And that's exactly what we told him. So he gave the title to Antonio as long as he redeems the car. At this point, he said himself, I want nothing. I remember those words very clearly from his face. Yeah, I know, but then, then you sell a car, car and you make some money. You don't, like, uh, hand it to you for $400. Nah, I didn't, I didn't make any money on this. I just No, gave him not you, yeah. him. Like, yeah. you're suggesting to me that he wanted to wash his hands of the car. Pretty much. And Pretty therefore, much. he, hold on, Antonio. Yeah. He, he, and he, that, okay. uh, that he, you, he, want, he didn't want the car anymore, and that's fine. If he doesn't want to own the car anymore, but you know, he's saying that you were buying it from him for sixteen hundred dollars. There's no way in the world I'm gonna pay sixteen hundred dollars for that car. There's just no way. I mean, the car's torn Who up. Who has the car? I sold the car. Oh, ha who, who? He gave me the money. I went to the car to the pound. I took the car home and I sold it for the same amount of money they like for four fifty. I sold it. You sold it for four fifty? For four fifty, yeah. We didn't make no money on the car. Because the money was the same amount of money that he gave me to go get the car. That's the same money that went back. Did you pocket it or did you give it to him? We, we split it. You split it. <laughs> <laughs> so he, so it was you nothing. never kept the car? No. I, you, I was more like the, the spiritual leader in this okay, situation. Okay, but Mr. Spiritual cult leader. Cult leader. <laughs> bad idea. Really Look at you now. Look, Look at you money. now. He was the financier. That's all. That's okay. All. So, That's all. okay. So, I was and, with the idea. So, That's and it. the only money he made was the exact money he had put out so that exactly. he wouldn't have to pay tickets later. Exactly. That's because it. when you lose a car, they don't forgive the tickets. Exactly. I, that's exactly what I told them. The whole thing was, Yana, we said, Jackson, you're going to lose the car. They're well, going to sell the car to pay the for the okay, tickets. Okay, okay, I got you. Take a ticket. If I don't rescue car. So when do you sell your used car to your boss? Yeah, I probably would. I would you really? <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean... Can I just ask, are you unemployed? Yes. I was, a, <laughs> I was just guessing. <laughs> going inside the courtroom. Did he ever say to you, um, you owe me money for the car that you... At some point, he began to hint. At some, not what right away. Say? Not what right away. Say? Hey, Steve, you know, I was thinking about this for a couple of days now. I think something wrong went down over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> I, I, I think I got shites in the so, deal somewhere so, out there. So I began, listen, Jackson, I can explain to you again. If I don't rescue your car, they said, we're taking your car anyway, and you still got to pay your tickets. So what do you want me to do? I had to do what you asked me to do, which is to help you, and I rescued your car. And the you story... You should have stayed out of the whole thing. Exactly, but... Even today, I'm still. He still can come to my house and still work for me. He's a wonder. He hates you. He's suing you. He feels ah, like you, so he feels like you did something. When was the last time you saw him? Ah, William Jackson. He's, he's stop he's asking him. He's special to the family. What? He, so he's, he's, he's special. mentioned that. My he kids, said love, my kids love him. My kids love him. Yeah, he yeah. said in the complaint that he saw your kids grow up. Yeah, my kids are still asking for him. <laughs> are they really? Where is Jackson? A goose, you know. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, let me ask you this. It, um, did you continue to work for him even though you never, was there ever a check? No, no, I don't recall a check at all. I would not give a check for a situation like this. Well, I mean, I that's so. kind of important. Was yeah. there ever a $1,600 check? No, 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 no. Do you have any proof of the $1,600 check that you claim he wrote for you that, quote, bounced? No, I just handed it back to him because I told, told him it, it was impossible Do you have any proof that you went to the check casting place and that you tried to cash it and that, it, it, that they wouldn't cash it? They might have a copy of it in, in down on Broadway. Did I don't you, know. I'm not going to Broadway to find yeah. it for you. But apparently, you? <laughs> I would never um, buy a car that old for when, that. For that when much. that car was spoken about being sold, his his worker told me he had sold my car for eight hundred dollars. Now I don't know nothing about the four hundred or whatever they they just said said was was. Taken I like have that. a question for you. Yeah. Did you continue to work for him after that? Odd jobs, day jobs. I did two weeks, and that's it. And I, I, I spoke to him about the problem late, late on. I told him it wasn't fair, but I gave him enough of time to let it solve in, 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 in his brain capacity so that he can figure out what is the right, right thing to do. That pretty much does it, doesn't it? Um, unless you folks had an agreement beforehand, for him to buy the car, 
and he f breached that agreement, I cannot order him to pay $1,600 for that car. The last things you just said happen to very much support the version that these two have of what it is that happened. You know, that you felt later that maybe something wasn't right with this and I gave him a chance to do the right thing and blah, 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 blah. Uh, based on what I'm listening to, I'm sorry, but my verdict in this case is for the defendant. Thank you, Anna. And so the plaintiff comes out on the losing end of this decision from Judge Millian. Come in a little closer here. What's uh, yeah. what's you feeling about the outcome here, Mr. Jackson? Well, I, I don't feel too well well about the outcome, but because uh, I spoke spoke to the. You think they pulled a fast one on you? Yeah, somehow. I think so. well, what did they do? I think so. What, did, uh, what do you think? Kind of sham me because I, you know I'm, I'm the type I don't I don't really look at value that much when it comes down to, to friendship. You done with that fa him and that family? Not really. I, 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 he's, he's not a bad guy, but I'm, I'm saying something just went, went wrong he right now. He shamed you. He shamed you. Yeah. Yep. All right. Right down All right. this way. All right. <laughs> well, he feels like uh, you stuck it to him. You know that. Yeah, you know, that's how everybody feels in the situations. But, you know, in reality, this guy's a good guy. He just has, he's delusional about how reality takes place when you have a car, especially when you have a car in New York City. It takes a lot of responsibility. And he doesn't seem to understand that. But anyway, he's still part of the family. He can come back anytime he, he wants. And my kids will miss him. Yeah, will he be back? I don't he'll know. Be back. He'll, he'll be, be back. back. The what about the spiritual hey, leader? I'm going to try to give him a right back right now if he can. <laughs> really? Yeah, 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 that's how, you know. All right, Harvey. Okay, this one's short and sweet. Never sign over title to a car until you are paid in full. Hi, this is Andy Katz, host of March Madness 365, presented by Grammarly. This week on the podcast, tune in as we discuss March Madness players, upsets, matchups, and bracket busters. Listen to March Madness 365 with Andy Katz, presented by Grammarly, wherever you get your podcasts. Grammarly is a secure AI writing partner that gives your team an instant first draft in a few clicks, not a few hours. Companies that use Grammarly save an average of 19 days per employee per year. Grammarly works seamlessly across 500,000 apps and websites. Get personalized on-brand writing help everywhere your team works. Learn what better writing can do for your company at Grammarly.com. Grammarly. Easier said. Done.